When you think of the most important skills that an engineering student may need, you might think about being good at math or being good at solving physics problems or being able to write code in a specific language. While these technical skills are obviously very important since they're gonna define what you do as an engineer and will be the things that you're gonna be doing, there's a set of skills that sits beneath that. So this video is actually about how to thrive and make the most out of engineering school and the seven skills necessary for you to be able to do just that. Now you want to think of engineering school as an ecosystem or like a video game, like there's you, the character, there's the professors, the TAs, there's the classes, there's all these things that are going on. There are events and then there are recruiters, there are companies, there are grad schools. And it's like this mini world where you as a character fall into it. Now within this ecosystem, there's resources. There are all the people you could learn from and ask for help, but there are also internal resources such as like your time, your attention, and the type of things you choose to be involved with. Now these seven skills that I'm about to tell you about, uh, if you don't have them, don't panic, or if you're not like great at them, don't panic, you can learn them. All right, let's get to it. So the first important skill you want to have is strong peripheral vision. And that could be interpreted literally, but what that means is you have the ability to always be looking around for opportunities and see what other people are doing. This is especially important if you're like a freshman or a sophomore or even a junior. Now this does not only mean the classes, but this could also mean like clubs, projects, what other people are doing. You want to have that really strong periphery where you're constantly aware of what is going on with that ecosystem. Now, this also means that within every one of your classes, you want to have strong periphery of, okay, where are the TAs? Uh, what kind of things are they good at? What is the professor specifically good at? What resources can you learn from? You want to always be having this idea of what is going on and you don't only want to be laser focused on the assignment or on the lecture or whatever it is. You want to always be looking around and seeing what is going on. Now, as you're constantly looking around and you're gathering all that type of information, this brings us to the second most important skill, which is the ability to digest information rapidly. Now, this is again, especially the case if you're still in your early years, like for first year, second year or whatnot, and you're gathering so much information, not only about the classes or the technical concepts, but also about the ideas of, okay, how do I get an internship? How do I talk to people? How do I acquire all these skills? And if you're able to digest that information very quickly and have like clarity on what needs to be done and what's important, what's stuff and what's fluff, what you should get rid of and what you should actually keep and pay attention to, uh, that's gonna give you a huge advantage. So basically you want to take complicated things and simplify them in your head to things that are much simpler. And that's something that Richard Feynman, for example, was really good at, or Elon Musk, he was also very good at doing that. Now, if you're curious how to actually do that, how to get better at digesting large amounts of information fast or increase your processing speed, one way to do that is just like lower the noise levels in your head. And what I mean by that is like being able to digest information and being able to see clear patterns and things has a lot more to do with what things you don't pay attention to rather than what you do pay attention to something really simple you could do is just turn off the notifications of the social media apps on your phone especially if you're in lecture or during a period of learning and this tiny little act of not being interrupted while you're learning something or acquiring information over time will compound and the second order effect of that will be that you're going to be much clearer of a thinker that's going to make you smarter be able to make better decisions now if you hear this and you're like what is this guy talking about and this sounds totally foreign to you uh, this is actually really good news because that means you're the person who will gain the most out of this information. All right, third skill, extremely important, is ambiversion. In other words, you want to know when to be extroverted and you know when to be introverted. Now, I know as humans, we usually have a tendency for one or the other. Some people will identify as extroverts. Some people will identify as introverts. But the reality is it's not a binary. It's not like you're one or the other. It's a spectrum, right? Some people can be like extremely introverted or a little bit introverted or like, eh, like somewhere in between. And you have the ability to move yourself along that spectrum on demand. Or in other fact, this is the skill that if you're able to acquire it and get really good at, it's a really good skill to have. And basically be able to turn on a switch and say, okay, I really don't like talking to people, but this is important because I want to actually get to know what like people are doing, or maybe go talk to a recruiter or go talk to like another engineer in the field and just get to kind of ask them what they're doing. That will require you to summon the energy to shift yourself along that spectrum and be a little more extroverted. Or likewise, if you're an extrovert, you want to be able to turn on the switch and become an introvert on demand when you basically need to. And that means like if you need to go study somewhere or do like a problem set by yourself or be able to like be alone and, and in order to think clearly or like, I don't know, take an exam or whatever. Uh, you want to be able to decide when you want to be around people, when you don't want to be around people. And if you can really control yourself around that spectrum, that's a huge advantage. And just the awareness alone that this is a spectrum and it's a skill rather than like a binary, yes, I'm this way or that way, 
that alone will give you a huge advantage. All right, fourth skill, extremely important in engineering school, uh, especially if you're not like a prodigy, which I'm guessing 99% of us are not. You want to have very high pain threshold. Uh, you want to be able to take a punch and get back up or ideally not fall at all. Um, and obviously I'm saying that figuratively, not literally. And the idea is that you will take a lot of like psychological punches. And this could be in the form of like getting a really bad exam score or like not doing well on a homework assignment or having like five homework assignment simultaneously and being on the verge of like a mental breakdown. Um, or this could be like a rejection from an internship interview. Now, basically you want to be able to persevere and have faith that things will be worth it. And this is actually the reason why many people drop out of engineering, switch to other majors as early as like the first semester because engineering is hard and the first punch people take um, it's, it's it's not easy to to handle like whether it is you fail your first exam or not not many people are willing to go through that so if you're willing to go through that and you see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, that's gonna give you a huge advantage because then you're gonna push through these hard times and you'll be able to get to like where things get better which brings me to the next skill skill number five which is having applied faith now what I mean by that is again because my the previous skill we mentioned you have to be able to persevere and push through things when it's hard but many often you'll ask yourself why am i even doing this like i don't see the light at the end of the tunnel i have no idea why i'm doing this um i don't see the outcome or the result that i'm gonna desire so why take the input why take the action and this is why you need to cultivate the skill that you just have to have faith that something good will be on the other other side because if you don't, you just won't take the action altogether. And that's really, really bad. Now, the reason why you want to develop applied faith or being able to reduce importance is to avoid burnout. Because if you set the expectation really high and you don't meet that outcome, you will burn out and you're gonna like crash and burn and it's gonna be really hard to get back up. And burnouts are something you want to avoid because they're really inefficient. All right, skill number six, extremely important. And this will probably help you prevent burnout altogether and will help you digest. This will probably help you with all the previous skills that I have mentioned. And that is being able to spot giants and stand on the shoulders of giants. And what I mean by that is being able to identify the people that can teach you something and going and asking them for help. For example, if you have a professor who's really good at electromagnetic physics, but may not be teaching a class on electromagnetic physics, but for example, you're searching through the research topics of the professors and you're seeing one professor is really good at electromagnetic physics, uh, you can probably email that professor and say, hey, I have these specific questions that I couldn't really understand from the textbook or whatnot. And you're gonna, and, and the professor will probably help you, but even if he does not, it's, it's worth it to still ask. Now this could also be like for TAs or friends or other classmates, or basically seeing somebody who like is good at something that you need help with and just going up and asking. And now obviously you want to be careful with this because you want to make sure that you're valuing other people's time and you want to make sure that you Google the question first, try to learn it on your own. And like only when you're really stuck, then you go and ask the people, but it's gonna make you look really like, I don't even know the word, but if you ask something that can be easily Googled or like if you just thought about it for five seconds, uh, you probably should not ask other people for help. You should only ask people for help with things that they have like expertise in and you have tried to learn it on your own and it's like really efficient to learn it on your own or like you just were, are really stuck. All right, and the last skill, skill number seven, is you want to be able to spot traps and avoid them. And I actually made a whole video about that, so let's go ahead and check it out.